So now before I begin this video I just want to remind you that these capacitors they stored charge sometimes for a long time. In this case this capacitor has almost a full volt of charge so I can just drain it. Since this is a small capacitor I can just collect, connect the two leads with the multimeter probe there and now you see we have a discharged capacitor and now you'll notice it's going up a little bit that's because these capacitors they kinda regain a little bit of a charge after a while they kinda have a memory so now before we start taking measurements of current this is a good circuit to, to do that with and you'll, you'll see why later first we're gonna look at the voltage of the battery so if I connect the red probe to the resistor there to the uh, end of the lead that goes right to positive part of the battery and then I do the same thing with the capacitor which is connected directly to negative now you see we have 8.82 volts so this is almost like measuring directly to the battery none of the uh, current or anything is going through the components right now they're not connected so these are just kind of dead ends there's no way for electricity to flow this is an electrolytic capacitor so this uh, multimeter is turned on too long it beeps when it does it so this is the negative side of the capacitor this side of the capacitor needs to be more negative than the other side and so the easiest way to do that is to just put the negative side directly to the negative side of the battery and when you do that that's the most negative this circuit can get so no matter what we do the other side will always be more positive so now before we start charging the capacitor I want to point out that I picked this resistor to make sure we have less than one milliamp of current this is 0.88 milliamps of current this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor and the reason why I did that is because I want to do this in microamps with microamps even though the number is smaller the number I'm talking about here 882 uh, sounds bigger it's a little easier to watch so it takes 1000 milliamps to equal one amp it takes 1 million microamps to equal one amp and a micro kinda looks like a little u so right now we'll get to the point of uh, the video we'll make sure the capacitor is discharged remember this is a small capacitor so even when it's fairly charged this is only a 9 volt battery you know it won't create a lot of current if you short it out you don't want to do that with larger capacitors so now since this is the more positive side of the circuit we're gonna put the red probe there since this is the more negative side of the circuit we're gonna put this probe there so now you'll see we started at almost 800 microamps and about kind of close to every second it started going down a hundred at first it went down faster and now you can see it's going down by tens so there's currents not going through as much as it was at the beginning and that's one thing to know about capacitors when you start charging them they accept a charge really easily they don't resist much but as they get more charged it takes longer to charge them even more they resist the current so as you can see now the current's not dropping very fast anymore it's trickling into the capacitor and still filling up the capacitor so ultimately you get to the point when it uh, stops accepting current we've almost leveled off now we'll measure how charged the capacitor is by switching to voltage because that's what the battery did it gave the capacitor a voltage but it had to go through the resistor which slowed it down and now you see we're charged to about the same voltage as the battery so now I just want to do a few reminders these are just uh, basic uh, things the when you're measuring current you don't want the meter connected directly to the battery they're not made to do that they're made to measure lower amounts of current so you need some resistance to protect the meter not all capacitors are polarized as I said this side always needs to be more negative than that side some of them a lot of them actually uh, either side 
can get either charge. That's no big deal. And then the capacitor holds the charge. As I said, you can see we still have 8.3 volts. That's really all the capacitor does. It gains a charge from the battery and then it holds it. There's a little bit of leakage. It, it drains over time and uh, because of imperfections, but uh, some of them faster than others, but it holds the charge. And then at some point, if you want to use that charge that it's holding, then it will discharge into the circuit.